All right, greetings and salutations. Uh, my name is Dan R. Arman, and uh, this is my AuthorTube newbie tag video. I'm excited to uh, start this and join this channel, and I'm um, looking forward to sharing with you some exciting things, as you can kind of see behind me. I'm in my um, my magician's toy house, as, as Ray Bradbury would call it, uh, where I do a lot of my creating. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited about this opportunity to, to share with people uh, my writing and uh, my love of science fiction, fantasy, um, and uh, show my Buckeye proud, too, because I'm an Ohioan. Um, I, however, before I get off to all that, uh, there is a little bit of business I need to take care of, uh, some kind of questions I need to answer. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Question number one. How did you find out about AuthorTube? Okay, well, how I learned about AuthorTube was through my wife, Rose Withering, and uh, I'll try to put some uh, links to her AuthorTube videos down below, uh, but she really uh, got me into this. Uh, I had been doing, um, I've been doing writing for quite a while, and uh, I never thought to try to promote myself through YouTube or start a channel, uh, which um, I didn't have the time for it, but now um, she kind of inspired me, have, watching her put together her videos. Uh, I thought, well, I got to get on some of this fun. Question number two. What genres do you write in? Question number three. What is your preferred writing tense point of view and category of story? Hmm. Yoda, what do you think about that question? Well, as I sort of um, I hinted at, I write a lot of science fiction uh, primarily, although... I guess you could say uh, Star Wars really isn't science fiction so much as science fantasy, but I also like uh, enjoy fantasy. Really, whatever strikes my fancy, which tends to be sort of on the uh, the fringes of uh, maybe magic realism and fantasy and science fiction, uh, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I really do enjoy um, testing my imagination a bit um, and writing the things that I enjoy reading, which is, as you can tell, a lot of science fiction. Uh, going about the room, you can see I, I've got a few up there. So Star Wars, Star Trek, um, got some uh, pictures from the pulp era of science fiction. So I'm a big fan of the Robert Heinlein and Isaac Asimov. Uh, so those are, that's what I generally write. But like I said, when it, whatever strikes my fancy at the time. Question number four, are you a plotter, pantser, or planter? Yeah, I'm not sure I really like that terminology, planter, but I guess that best describes me. Um, I'm not, um, I'm not, whenever I write, my, I guess my methodology is I come up with a, a general outline of what I want to do, uh, where I see the characters, um, you know, the broad story arcs, um, you know, fleshing out some of the characters' backgrounds, like, and this really helps me get to know the characters sort of like uh, before I start writing. But I generally, once I start writing, um, I leave myself open to the possibilities of what these characters might do. And a lot of times uh, the characters may have, uh, if I've done it, the character in some way that I can understand them as people, uh, they may do things that um, may surprise me, some things that I hadn't planned for. And so if I overplan, uh, that kind of puts them in a straitjacket. And if I underplan, I won't have uh, fleshed out characters that I can can use. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't like the word planter. Maybe um, Zen planner. Maybe I like that better. Zen planner. I'll call myself a Zen planner writer uh, because I can't go in without a plan. But on the other hand, um, if I over plan, it uh, generally doesn't work out too well. It, it puts me it puts my characters in a bind and then I, I can't get out of it. Question number five. Are you a self-published, published, or yet to be published? Uh, well, to answer that question, I've been both uh, published and self-published as well. Um, generally, I started out actually as a newspaper reporter. And uh, so I wrote 
you know, obviously nonfiction uh, just to begin, and uh, wrote short stories as a, generally as a hobby, uh, but I did have a few of them, a couple uh, published in the late 90s or mid 90s. Uh, but uh, more recently, I've had uh, two novels published, and hopefully, uh, let's roll those beautiful covers post production. I have no idea if that worked or not, but uh, if not, uh, here they are um, River of Dreams and Bifrost, and uh, both of them are science fiction. Uh, it can be acquired by through Amazon, uh, through barnesandnoble.com, uh, a number of local uh, bookstores and uh, libraries. Question number six. What publishing company, literary agent, and or printing company are you represented by or use? Uh, I have gone through um, traditional publishing before. Uh, I did have a literary agent at one time, and uh, it did give me some nicer, uh, more polite rejection letters. Um, so maybe some handwritten ones that were really nice. Uh, but ultimately, I decided that uh, I like to have um, creative control over my work. And uh, I actually do enjoy having uh, something self-published. Uh, that doesn't mean that I won't go back um, and try, if it, depending on, on what it, the project is, whether it's a short story or a poem or a novel and uh, whatever, uh, I might go through traditional publishing. It just depends on the project, uh, what my goals are for it, and uh, what I think the market might be like for that. Question number seven. What author to related videos can we expect to find on your channel? Uh, well, I plan to do some uh, book reviews of uh, local authors that I know of, um, Ohio authors, primarily science fiction and fantasy. Um, maybe some uh, some other genres as well, depending on uh, what I'm reading at the time. Also some um, help videos for writers like me um, who encounter challenges and problems. Um, those sorts of things are are the are what I'm I'm planning to do. Um, and of course, I'll take suggestions um, as well. Question number eight: When did you start writing? Well, I started uh, very early, about third grade, and I was pretty awful at it. Uh, but I had a couple of teachers who were very encouraging. Uh, they, they kept telling me to keep at it. And uh, while other people were in 4-H were raising animals and uh, uh, you know growing things and uh, pumpkins or whatever for uh, county fair, I was writing stories uh, for my 4-H project and um, and that's where it began. Uh, now, as if you're asking, when did I start professionally? Well, that took a lot longer. Um, that happened after I went to Kent State University for a degree in journalism and English and uh, got a job at a local newspaper. I was freelance writing for a while and um, a local editor liked my work. And um, uh, that they say is that. Um, after that, I, I got a job as an editor at, at Pearson Publishing uh, worked there for a number of years, and uh, and that is that. Question number nine. What was the first story you ever wrote? Hmm. My first story. Well, uh, did I mention I was really terrible as a writer uh, for early on? I guess everybody is. Uh, but um, uh, this is Rocky Raccoon. Um, and uh, the inspiration for my very first story uh, in third grade. Now, uh, Rocky, not to be confused with Rocky Raccoon, the Beatles song, uh, which I didn't know about when I was in third grade, nor to be confused with Rocket Raccoon, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy character, which if they if he even existed back then um, in 1980 or 79 or whenever it was I started writing these stories, uh, he didn't exist nor were the uh, Ninja Turtles. But the essence of my first story was, um, it was a post-apocalyptic tale about uh, four raccoons, Rocky being one of them, uh, and Rocky and their bu his buddies lived in a post-apocalyptic world after human beings had erased themselves <laughs> from existence through nuclear war. 
Uh, yeah, it was still the Cold War then. And uh, these guys had gone from uh, scavengers to the top of the food chain. And so uh, my various very short uh, adventures uh, followed them around and their um, their cohorts as they uh, went on different adventures uh, in the, um, I guess, nuclear wastelands. Uh, but that was my first uh, story ever. Um, not very good, and um, I, I probably would not revisit it, although my mother keeps asking me if I'm going to, like, actually do a, a decent version of it, because uh, she liked the idea. But then again, all mothers are supposed to. Uh, but um, now my, my per first professional story was a uh, space adventure uh, with an aging uh, fighter pilot uh, who was going on his last mission. It was called uh, When Heroes Go Down. And that was published in 1996, uh, shortly after I left, about two years after I left college. Um, and that's my first professional. Question number 10. What authors have inspired you your writing the most? Uh, well, I mentioned Heinlein and Asimov earlier. Uh, those were early influences on my science fiction. And uh, I would say there's a lot of Heinlein uh, still in my first novel, River of Dreams. Uh, but, um, boy, I, I started, just like I started writing at an early age, um, I was really encouraged to read at an early age. Uh, as a matter of fact, when um, uh, we, we lived out in the country, and uh, I usually waited for the school bus. While we, we, we did so, my mother, who is a, who's an elementary school teacher, uh, she would read to me while we waited for the bus early in the morning. And uh, she treated me to my first uh, taste of fantasy, which was uh, The Hobbit. Uh, so in kindergarten, she was reading me The Hobbit uh, a little bit each day. And by the end of the, I would say, the end of the first grade, uh, we had gotten into the Lord of the Rings series, and I was reading to her. Um, so I read a lot of um, uh, a lot of things. And as you kind of see here from this, this is just like one bookcase of like 20 that I have. Uh, I'm a bit of a sponge when it comes to uh, what I read and what are my influences. I'd have to say more recently as an adult, uh, I read just about everything. Uh, sometimes I read just for pleasure. Other times I read for content. I read a lot of history books uh, for to, to understand, uh, to get content, to get ideas about uh, plot and characters and, and what have you. Uh, but also let's read um, auth other authors that I enjoy uh, to read them for technique. Um, I, th I find that um, not to simply emulate them, but to, to look and see what do I like about these authors and, and what techniques can I use uh, to enhance my own, my own writing and, and to allow me to bring forth my, my writer's voice as it were. Um, so more as an adult, uh, I tend to read uh, authors like Dan Simmons. Um, right now I'm reading a, a a book, a fantasy novel about an assassin called Nevernight, um, which I think is quite interesting. So I, I have a very diverse array. It just depends on uh, my mood. And also, uh, if I'm working on a project, I'll, I'll try to either pick a book that I think is going to be similar or maybe even the opposite direction, something that I think is going to be the opposite. So I have some kind of contrast, some counterpoint. Uh, but that's, that's what I read everything <laughs> question number 11 do you schedule your writing sessions or simply get to writing whenever you can find the time uh, well you know um, finding the time to write is really a challenge and uh, I, the job i have now is is an online teacher i've been uh, teaching online for the last uh, 14 or 15 years and then sometimes uh, i've been teaching college um, English as well. Uh, so if for my teacher friends out there who might be watching, you may recognize that um, that's the kind of job that um, is like absorbs your time. Uh, there's always one more paper you could grade. There's always one more email you could send or a family you could call or lesson to plan. There's always something else out there to distract you from writing. Uh, but as I quickly learned as a teacher, and as my wife has kind of helped me bring me back into the writing community, um, is that uh, it's important to, if you want to be a complete human being, uh, to, to make time to focus. Uh, so I would say I, I try to uh, plan and schedule some time. 
Uh, I try to uh, set myself a word count each day. Uh, it sometimes is very small, depending on if it's during the school year, I might give myself a, a word count of like 100 a words a day. And so, um, you know, I can't sit there and Netflix until, um, you know, I've got those 100 words a day. And con conversely, you know, if uh, it's five o'clock or six o'clock at night and I'm still not done with work, um, you know what? Uh, time to put aside the work, uh, that work, and uh, go to my other life and uh, and do some writing because I know it. Um, if I haven't written in a while, I get kind of like I get the shakes, you know, it's sort of like a, an addiction uh, and uh, I'm going through withdrawal symptoms. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I it's really bad. It was really bad for a while uh, when I was working on my master's degree and and then teaching on the side and I couldn't seem to find a, a way to to find time to write. Uh, but uh, you can always find time to write um, somehow, even if it's just a few words at a time. So uh, I, I would say I, I tend to schedule because if I don't schedule, um, my life encroaches on on the writing. And uh, there's always a, there's always an excuse not to write. But um, if you make the time, if you plan for it, uh, you can always find time. Question number 12. Do you type on a computer, typewriter, write everything out by hand, or use a blend of those? And where do you write in general? Uh, I'd say my process has evolved over time. Um, when I was young, uh, obviously, I, you know, I'm old, so I predate computers. Uh, so I wrote everything out by hand. I still have some of the old manuscripts uh, that I hand wrote. Um, and uh, eventually I did get a, a little Buddy L typewriter, a little plastic cheap one uh, where it kind of typed uphill. And, uh, and you really had to hit the keys really hard to make it work. Um, but eventually I graduated the computer and uh, ever since I, I might make some notes on paper, uh, but generally speaking, when I draft, when I revise, uh, I'm all computerized. Um, I, I feel more comfortable now doing that. Uh, I can type at the speed that I think, um, and I find handwriting a little tedious, and, and my handwriting's not so great anyways. So I tend to type out everything that I do, um, but I know a lot of people who, who like to handwriting everything and then transcribe it and type it up. Um, that's, just, uh, that's just tedious, and my process is already kind of tedious enough as it is. Question 13. What are you most looking forward to now that you're part of AuthorTube? Okay, so I am really excited about a couple of things. Number one, um, I like to, whenever I'm writing, I usually encounter the kinds of challenges and problems that uh, many writers face with, uh, whether it's with a problematic character or plot hole or, you know, how to uh, ingrain a story with uh, the research that I made done, uh, be it scientific or historical. And uh, so this, I think this channel might offer me an opportunity to share with you some of my writing process. Uh, so if you're writers out there um, and you get stuck in a similar fashion that I do, uh, this might I, I bring you either some advice to help you get unstuck, because uh, I can show you how I did it, uh, or at least some solace <laughs> in knowing that you're not out, out there alone. Uh, number two, um, I'm a, a proud Ohioan. Um, uh, with the Buckeye State, and I know that we've got, I've, I've uh, been to a lot of conventions. Um, I've been to, well, I guess not a lot, but uh, some conventions. I've been to uh, give talks on writing, and um, so I've met a lot of really cool people along the way, and uh, I'd like to share with you uh, some Ohio, primarily science fiction fantasy authors that you may have not, may have kind of slid under the radar, of course, I do want to do some self-promotion as well. Um, I, I'm told I have to do that because, you know, books don't sell themselves, apparently. Um, wish they did. Wish they just would happen. Uh, but that's not the reality. Uh, but so I, I want to promote primarily um, the friends that I have in the, uh, the self-publishing or the indie publishing world. Uh, Ohioans that write great sci-fi sci and fantasy. I think we're a state that's blessed with a lot of talent, and uh, it may not be as noticed as uh, as it should be. So uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to share with you some videos uh, that will 
uh, add some book reviews. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, finding those little, those um, small indie authors who, um, you know, are, are talented, have great stories to share, but you don't know, you know, you, know, you don't want to plop down your bucks, um, uh, you can do that. Um, if you want some writing advice, obviously there's lots of channels that have writing advice, but uh, uh, hopefully I'll be able to approach it. And yeah, I'll even talk about whatever you guys want me to talk about, uh, science fiction and fantasy wise. Uh, I don't know if I want to dip my toe into the latest Star Wars movie and and telling my review. It's, I've seen plenty. I know it's um, you know uh, pretty divisive. But um, I think that's uh, I think it's great though that at least Star Wars is in the in the public conscious again. It's it's something that could um, uh, in general bring us together. You know, something of our sh that we share passionate about. So uh, I want to share with you all these things are my uh, book reviews. Um, obviously, a little self promotion and some writing tips. Uh, so uh, tune in and uh, and we'll see where we can go with this. If you got you know things you'd like to hear from me, you can always put them in the comments below. If you like this uh, video, uh, go ahead and uh, share it, like, subscribe, shall like a scribe, um, whatever the kids do these days, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. All right, thanks very much. Bye. Mm -hmm.